My name's Robert Nightingale. I'm one of the co-founders of Mallee London, and I'm going to tell you the build story about the Mallee Rally Royale, which were two support vehicles we built for the rally this year. So the long story, if I think back to the, how this sort of, how this became, what it is, in 2002, I was working in uh, Nepal, living and working in Nepal, and every weekend I'd do a the bus trip from Kathmandu up to Pokhara, about seven hours on the bus, and you'd sit on the roof, and, and it would always invariably break down every other trip. And on one of these breakdowns, I was sitting on the side of the road, and this Enfield kind of started coming up this dirt track, and I only saw it for like, 20, 30 seconds, it had really high um, motocross forks, motocross bars, straight through pipes, had like a really lowered hard tail, huge oversized motocross tires, and I'd never seen a custom bike like that, or a custom Enfield, and he just spanned through the mud, round the corner, and it was gone, and like, I just fell in love immediately. And, you know, we all have those bikes that just leave a huge lasting impression on you when you're a kid. So like skip forward seven years later, my first paycheck, I bought a 1969 Royal Enfield Bullet. Moving forward to like 2015 when Johnny and I started uh, Malay and started making motorcycle luggage and adventure accessories. That brought us into a space where we ended up creating the Malay Mile, which was, you know, it started out as kind of this fight club where if you turn up, you had to race. And it was all about getting really young people onto motorcycles very few rules, really no barrier to entry, real sort of camaraderie. And um, as the Mali Mile developed over a few years, it gave birth to the great Mali Rally, the longest inappropriate motorcycle rally in the country. And when we first started it, we were all used to pack into Land Rovers and we were following all the bikes up and down the country, supporting them, doing everything we possibly could to make sure every motorcycle and every rider completes the 1,400 mile course from the southern tip to the northern tip of mainland Britain. And the rally is all about sort of finding the most beautiful landscapes in the country. It's a six stage, uh, six day rally. And, but by the second year, we realized that we're, there's just big time differences between, you know, if there was a problem with a bike to how fast we could get there with a support vehicle. And so we had this idea about building support bikes for the rally. And we know, or we knew then that Royal Enfield are always up for fun. Like when we first told them about the idea of Moto Polo, which is a ridiculous idea for the, for the Malay Mile, they turned up a month later with five Moto Polo bikes all kitted out and ready to go. And the Royal Enfield was just, it was just the perfect timing of the Interceptor came out about three weeks before. And Johnny and I took a test ride down in Portugal on one of those first bikes. And after signing all the paperwork and saying, of course, we'll look after the machine and be very sensible, we found the biggest hill outside of Lisbon and tried to go as fast as we possibly could. And looking down, this is the first time I took an infield over 100 miles an hour. And we crept in, you know, doing 110 down this hill. And just the thrill of suddenly having an infield where, you know, we'd love this brand for, for, for 15 years or more suddenly having a, an infield that was really capable, that was just fast, lightweight, fun. Um, yeah, it changed, it changed everything. And we, we just knew that would be the, the bike that would be perfect for this, um, for this design brief. Although the, the rally is all on B roads, there is a little bit of semi-off-roading in the fact that like, there can be rivers that have broken their banks and so you get a lot of mud on the roads, there can be gravel tracks up to some of the rally camps. So I had to have off-road capabilities, using the Interceptor 650 as the heart, but it, we knew it needed bigger shoes, we knew it needed um, a higher stance, it needed more lighting. And we started taking inspiration from a lot of the rally machines as well, looking at old Dakar bikes, looking at old Safari Porsches, you know it has to have lots of extra protection. And so slowly, bits came from around the world to the Royal Enfield workshop. And then on trips up and down, we started to, to assemble, creating a very specific tool for a very specific job. And that was really what this is about. As a product designer, you know, form follows function. It's great to see custom bikes built for the sake of being customized, but custom, some, customize something very specific for the engineers to support a rally. That was, um, that was a really fun project to work on. And I think taking a custom bike in a slightly different direction as well. So then we unveiled the bike uh, at the Bike Shed Show. 2019. Um, so there was the twin bikes on the Malay stand, there was the big reveal, 
and I think we finished it at about midnight the night before, so we are all, you know, Adrian and the guys were up at um, Royal Enfield's HQ in Leicester, getting everything, everything built, and, and I think like many bikes at the Bike Shed Show, that's its first ever viewing, and everything was more than finger tight, but we hadn't uh, track tested it yet. So as soon as the show was finished, we took the bike straight back up to, to Royal Enfield, took it onto the track, and then it started testing. So after some track tests, uh, we were all pretty happy with how it was performing. So we took them both down to Wheels and Waves, and its first proper outing was up onto Punk's Peak. Um, so I got lucky enough to race this one, um, won the first two heats on Punk's Peak, and then got thrashed by someone else uh, pretty soon after that. But you could see, because I mean, it, you'll see these British Customs pipes, they are obnoxiously loud, which I think is, well, I like it a lot. But when the people watching it go up and down Punk's Peak, no one saw that it was an Enfield. And they're like, it sounded mean, it sounded fast. Um, you could hear mumbles like, in the crowd, people saying it was some sort of scrambler. Um, I liked it, and when people saw the badge, they were really, yeah, really pleasantly surprised. So from Wheels and Waves, we took it up onto the Great Malay Rally 2019. Um, started down in Cornwall at the southern tip, and stage by stage, we ran up through the most beautiful landscapes uh, in Britain, all the way up to the northern tip of Scotland. Uh, Callum from De Bolex Engineering, he's our lead engineer, and has been the lead engineer on the rally since the very beginning. He was lucky enough to ride uh, the red one, and he was doing an amazing job keeping every bike on the road. Him and uh, Tony from Tony's Mechanics Classes, they were up until midnight, more, than, more nights than not, tinkering, getting old bikes uh, race re rally ready for the next morning. But um, once I'd mentioned to Iron and Air magazine, um, before the Bike Shed show, that we were building these two bikes for the engineers, and then we came up with this idea to offer the second bike as a competition, as the experience to ride in the rally. So they had a big competition which ran at the beginning of this year, and one very lucky guy, Charlie, got to ride the black Malay Rally Royale for the entirety of the rally. Um, and he just had a grin from ear to ear the whole time. Yeah, he had a pretty, pretty wild rally adventure with the Iron Air guys. Then I decided to take my little summer holiday, a bit of a busman's holiday, but managed to convince my wife that we should head for the Alps. And we did two and a half thousand miles from Vienna to Monaco, scouting out new rally routes possibly for the future. And I think it is true love when you can get two people on 18 inches of saddle on a custom bike to spend three and a half weeks riding up and down every mountain pass. Um, yeah, there wasn't a lot of <laughs> space for us. But um, yeah, amazing roads. But it's been a really, yeah, a really great machine. And the future of these will be on the rally for, for 2020 uh, and, and future editions. We look forward to seeing how they, how they perform over the next few years with our engineers and, and our team, keeping everybody on the road and heading in the right direction. But let's take a little walk around and look at some of the design features for the rally machines. So let's start with the shoes. We selected the Heisenau K60 Scouts really capable tyre for light off-roading, on roads. slightly harder rubber, but gives us really good grip. We tried to use as many of the original components as possible, so these are the original rims, just painted black. These are old motocross fork guards. This is the KTM, um, ex-KTM Dakar forks, uh, held in with the custom-made yokes by Harris Performance. So there's two parts of the yokes here. The front mud guard is actually off an old Himalayan, a Royal Enfield Himalayan. Obviously the pier lighting for the front back and the fog lights. And then the fly screen was actually made out of an old uh, rear mud guard, which we then cut and reshaped for the front. Original uh, control panel. This is the British Customs tracker bar. Gives a really nice wide stance. Uh, these are old 80s controls. Uh, we wanted something a bit more retro with this kind of the feel of the, the bike. Built well grips, the Rizoma indicators integrated into the end of the bars. This is one of the Malay uh, map cases, which is integrated into the uh, tank bag. This tank bag can also be used as a side pannier or a tail pack, so it's a hybrid piece. And actually, I brought one of the, the log books. So in the rally, all the riders get their log book to check in and check out on each component. But this is one of my old sketchbooks. That was the first sketch for the bike. And when we were talking with the team at Royal Enfield, the design brief, the fun machine, 
that became sort of central to what we were looking to build. The idea that you just want, when you saw the bike, you wanted to swing a leg over and just head for the nearest hill. Um, so even then, we, sort of, we were looking at how we could build in tool rolls into the seats, looking into um, how the luggage, although our luggage is universal, it was nice to be able to have a seat adapted specifically for it. Then onto the, the paint job. Pete and the Royal Enfield team were helping us uh, hand paint this. So this is a, a relief map. There were two of our favorite roads in the rally. This bike was dedicated to our greatest road in Scotland, which is called the Apple Cross Pass. And then our second favorite road in the rally is in the Lake District, which is called the Hard Knock Pass. So the twin twin of this bike, which is all in black and silver, has the relief map of the Hard Knock Pass on the tank as well. All of the engine is stock. All of the frame, no modifications. Um, we added in some guards onto the side. So we've got engine guards, pier fog lights. Harris Performance again helped us build the, the bash guard, which is beautifully made all out of one piece of aluminium. And then moving on to the rear of the bike, um, British Customs pegs. And then this is the British Customs Predator pipe, which they um, helped make a connector for us to use those onto the the Enfield Interceptor. Moving on to the back of the bike, this is the Malay Moto Pannier, our universal pannier which fits every motorcycle, wax cotton, waterproof membrane, NATO spec military webbing, the same on the uh, Moto Duffel, larger piece. So when Callum was riding on this, he had one of these full of Imperial tools, one full of metric, and then on the inside of that, we had extra um, flags, indicators, spare components. Again, the Heidenau K60 Scout, same rim, but we did change the stance of the bike by putting uh, extenders into the rear shock absorbers. So the whole bike is quite a lot higher than the original 650. As I mentioned about the bike being designed as a specific tool for a specific job, we wanted extra lighting so when the engineer comes to, a, um, to help somebody, they can remove that and they've got an extra spotlight uh, which is ro rotatable. There's a side switch on it as well. And then we've got the Rizoma lights built into the tail. It's the original seat base, but we used our wax canvas to uh, recover and we changed the form to make a custom seat, which is a little bit more rally appropriate. So this is what the bike looks like naked without any of the Malay luggage. We are working on a, a kit called the Malay Rally Royale. So you better turn your Enfield 650 interceptor into one of these rally bikes. Um, so keep an eye out on malaylondon.com for the announcement in 2020. But I hope you enjoyed the, the, this short uh, build talk. Uh, it's a five minute video. I've talked for about 45 minutes. Um, so good luck in the edit. But thank you again for the opportunity. Uh, so if you've got a keen eye, uh, you'll notice I'm not Robert. I'm actually his official stunt double. Um, he's had to run away. So I get to play with the bike and make a bit of noise. Uh, we'll fire it up. Don't forget to subscribe to the Bike Sheds YouTube channel where there'll be a lot more custom builds and build stories.